Yes, I know. Just saying .NET triggers flashbacks of grey windows applications, giant monolithic code bases, and the ever-present Visual Studio with its 200-step setup wizard. But if you haven't looked at C-Sharp in a while, you're in for a big surprise. For the first time ever, Microsoft did something good. In what can only be described as a miracle, they managed to drag the entire C-Sharp ecosystem out of the enterprise grave and, somehow, they made the language kind of cool. Between .NET Core, the new compiler features, and the rise of Blazor, or the multi-platform app UI, C-Sharp is starting to look less like a corporate dinosaur and more like a modern productive language that might actually be fun to use. So let's spend the next few minutes looking at what C-Sharp is like today, how the .NET ecosystem evolved, and whether it makes sense to invest your time in this stack. As a quick side note, I'm a developer with 15 years of experience, mostly on the backend with Java or Kotlin, and some front-end pain in between. I've tried most of the cool languages, which are praised by tech streamers, but I also like to revisit the ones that quietly evolved while nobody is really paying attention. Before looking at all the cool things C-Sharp is offering, let's take a 30 seconds history detour to put things into perspective. C-Sharp was originally built in the early 2000s to be Microsoft's answer to Java. And honestly, it was pretty much a copy-paste job in the beginning. Same syntax, same object-oriented obsession, and the same mountain of XML. But then, something weird happened. Instead of stagnating like most big corp tech, C-Sharp started evolving. Lambda showed up, then async await, then pattern matching, records, top-level statements, and nullable types. A ton of stuff you'd expect in a modern language were being added, all without breaking old projects. On top of that, the .NET framework finally got the reboot it desperately needed. See, the original .NET, now called .NET Framework, was Windows only. It was built back in the early 2000s for enterprise apps that lived and died inside corporate firewalls. It worked, but it was heavy, bloated, and chained to Windows like it was a government-issued ankle monitor. Then came .NET Core, and everything changed. Microsoft admitted they messed up, so they started over. They made .NET Core cross-platform, open source, and modular. Suddenly, you could run .NET apps on Linux and macOS without weird hacks or dependency hell. You could throw your C-sharp code into Docker containers, and you could build microservices that actually made sense outside of a giant corporate SharePoint farm. So the old .NET became .NET Framework, and the new and improved .NET Core is now known simply as .NET. Naming things is hard, but Microsoft has a gift for always making things harder than they need to be. So let's get straight to the point. If your only memory about C-sharp is code looking like this, you are in for a big surprise. Today, you can replace all that boilerplate code with this. Sure, I know this is just a one-off example, but it actually shows pretty well the evolution of the language. C-sharp now supports records, expression-bodied functions, destructuring, nullable reference types, type inference, pattern matching, and a whole bunch of stuff that used to be reserved for cool kids' languages like Kotlin or Scala. On top of that, it is a strongly typed, statically compiled language, so you get great tooling, refactoring, and IntelliSense support out of the box, especially in Microsoft-based IDEs. The compiler will nag you about nulls, and that's a good thing. Also, the async await implementation in C-sharp is probably one of the best solutions out there. It's simple, readable, and doesn't make you want to quit programming like Java does. But talking about these features might not give them justice. Let's look at some actual code examples and review seven of c -sharp most exciting modern features that you actually need to know if you want to be productive with the language from day one. Keep in mind that this is not a full language tour, it's just the stuff that matters in real projects. However, if you are interested in a deep dive into the language, please let me know in the comments. Records is probably one of the best quality of life improvements because it removes the boilerplate of defining constructors, getters, setters, and other nonsense while giving you access to simple, immutable data structures. They are value-based, which means two objects with the same data are equal. On top of that, they come with convenience methods like the with keyword for cloning and modifying, or the construction support which makes working with them a real breeze. Pattern matching is one of those features that looks small on paper but makes a huge difference in practice. It lets you write cleaner, more readable code by getting rid of clunky if and switch statements full of type checks and casts. You can match by type, by value, by property, or even do nested pattern matching, all without blowing up your code with verbosity. What's more exciting though, especially for real-world projects where safety is a must, is that C-sharp has made nullability part of the type system. This means you can explicitly declare whether a variable can be null or not, and the compiler will back you up. If a reference type isn't marked as nullable, you're not supposed to assign null to it. If you do, the compiler warns you. It's not bulletproof, but it catches a ton of bugs early. 
The next feature, however, feels almost unfair once you start using it. Link is SQL-like, querying for collections, but is built inside the language with full IntelliSense and compile time checking. So, it turns what would normally be a mess of loops, filters and conditionals into clean declarative code that actually reads like what you're trying to do. But what makes Link special is the fact that it isn't limited to in-memory collections. When used with Entity Framework, which is .NET's built-in ORAM, it generates SQL under the hood, meaning you can write expressive queries in C-Sharp and let the provider handle the database translation. As I already mentioned, C-Sharp absolutely nails async programming. There is no callback hell, no nested lambdas, and no manual thread management. Just straightforward, top-to-bottom readable code that actually works. Of course, there's also support for things like value task, configure await, and async streams if you need more control, but the default experience is already miles ahead of what most other languages offer. Minimal APIs are another big win for the ecosystem. In modern.net, you can write an entire HTTP API in just five lines of code. That's it. No controllers, no startup class, and no unnecessary ceremony. Just routes and logic. On top of that, if you need to plug in dependency injection, logging, or middleware, you still can. They are perfect for microservices, small tools, or developers who don't want to waste time on rewriting the same boilerplate code over and over again. Finally, we need to talk source generators, which are probably one of the most underrated features in modern C-Sharp. They let you write code that generates other code at compile time. This means no more reflection hacks, no runtime performance hits, and no duplicating boilerplate across your codebase. So the language is in better shape than ever, but what about the platform itself? Well, you are in for a big surprise. Let's take a quick detour into what .NET actually means today, because if you haven't followed its evolution, it's easy to get lost in the naming mess Microsoft left behind. First of all, modern .NET runs everywhere ranging from Windows, Mac OS and Linux to Docker and the cloud. On top of that, the platform is really fast. The .NET runtime is consistently one of the top performers in benchmarks, blowing past most dynamically typed languages without even trying. .NET is also modular, so you don't need to pull in 500 dependencies just to get a basic app running. And, most importantly, it's unified. There is only one SDK to rule them all, whether you're building APIs, desktop apps, mobile apps, cloud functions, or even games. But the biggest shift, though, is that .NET is no longer just for enterprise developers stuck in cubicles. The platform now includes ASP.NET Core for building fast, scalable web apps and APIs, Blazor that lets you write front-end code in C-Sharp instead of JavaScript, a multi-platform UI framework that lets you build native apps for Android, iOS, macOS, and Windows from a single codebase, Entity Framework Core to work with databases, gRPC support, cloud-ready hosting, and built-in dependency injection all baked into the framework. On top of that, you even get first-class CLI tooling, so if you're allergic to Visual Studio, you can use VS Code or just stay in the terminal like a civilized person. And the whole thing is open source under the .NET Foundation. So this is not the .NET your college professor taught back in 2008. This is a completely rethought, re-engineered, and genuinely modern development platform that actually competes with the cool stacks. If you liked this video, you should check out one of these ones next. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and until next time, thanks for watching.